confident in the, in the outcome at uh, this point for everybody inside of the, uh, the locker room tonight. They did, they rushed everything out of the field. Um, just playing the result, but man, the, uh, the journey's been unbelievable. Um, when we took over this program 11 months ago, uh, where it was and, and who it, and where it is today, uh, two completely, uh, just proud of these guys. They've come so far, man. And, uh, you know, a special thanks to our seniors, um, guys that stayed, that fought, that competed, that bought in that led, um, that showed what uh, the spirit of a volunteer is, our, our young men uh, that aren't seniors, that uh, will be coming back, um, how much growth they've shown over the course of 11 months on and off the field. Just so proud of them and, and uh, you know, so disappointed for them and, and tonight, uh, disappointed for our fans in, in the outcome of the game too. Man, the, <laughs> the passion of, of our fan base is just, it's not surpassed anywhere in college football, man. They are on fire, man. Driving up with the buses tonight was a special scene, as good as I've ever been a part of. And, and uh, you know, appreciate all of their support tonight uh, through the bowl season, but uh, really all season long, and, and appreciate them being on this journey with us. That will open it up. Josh, did you get an explanation on the on Jalen's play there, that fourth down play? Did they, did they say that was forward progress and not reviewable, or what did you hear on that? Yeah, they said the forward progress had been been stopped out. sounded like the whistle blew after he extended the football, but, you know, that's. And then uh, the big screen out there, you guys can see that replay. Ball stretched over, didn't look like his knee was down. What was your reaction when you saw the replay? Um, initially, I was excited because I thought we scored. But, you know, it was a tough call. Um, I feel like me and my teammates gave it our all. And, um, you know, the outcome didn't end how we wanted it to. Josh, for, for you guys offensively, the second quarter um, shut out uh, only 60 yards of offense, I think, compared to the rest of the game. Where you were, what, did, what happened to get you guys out of the second quarter? Completely out of the ordinary. Just I, I, I didn't feel like in the second quarter we executed some simple things very well. Um, you know, just <clears throat> you know, we got a couple things that got a chance to be explosive plays. We don't execute on. We got some simple things in you know third down situations that we don't execute. It, uh, you know, not taking anything away from Purdue, but we weren't very good in that quarter. I, I thought there were some things just. You know, uh, maybe the layoff just uncharacteristic of us, uh, you know, from, from how we were playing uh, later in the football season tonight. And then on the, the last drive of regulation, did you open with two runs? I know you had a long run with Jabbar, but was just think you could pop something there with a minute five three times? Yeah, just some, uh, some high coverage from them. The box was light. Thought we had a chance to, to handle it and, and pick up some things. Um, you know, we didn't. Execute, you know, call and just when we're on the you know forty one yard line, forty two yard line, whatever it was there, uh, you know, for a couple of plays there. It gives them a little bit better field position. In overtime you went with Jalen Wright instead of small. Was small banged up a little bit? I know at one point went into the tent. Yeah. I and that was kinda of true for a couple of our guys, but certainly certainly Jabari. Theo, you had said that this was a game that you may have some opportunities. Y'all did get three interceptions, but obviously they, they racks up some passing yards. What was kind of what kind of took place out there that you saw? I mean, like they didn't run anything that we haven't seen on film. We just didn't execute when we needed to. You know, uh, I know that they had guys out, we had guys out, but their guys stepped up and made more more plays than we did. And then uh, talk a little bit about uh, Coach Heifel to address this, but second quarter, even in the part of the third quarter, the offense bogged down a little bit. Then you caught fire late in the fourth quarter. What was the difference there? Yeah, just re, uh, regrouping on the sideline and talking to the offense and just getting them going, trying to get everyone's energy um, in a positive direction. And, um, you know, to finish the game, we came out hot and executed how we needed to. Cedric, you guys uh, ended up the highest scoring season in UT history. How do you think, what, what's the ceiling for this offense you think moving forward? Just going to continue to get better. Uh, you know, continue to go workouts and, you know, staying out there and 
watching extra film so we don't have this feeling in our mouth uh, again next year. So this improvement is our first year in this system, and uh, I think we're going to grow from this year. And at the end of the end there, are you consoling Bayless? You know, um, just kind of what's he meant to you, and, and then too, like, does that kind of, you know, add a little motivation to, you know, head right into January or you know, next year on your mind? Yeah, um, you know, like the rest of my teammates, Bayless is, is like a brother to me. Um, since the first day I got here, you know, he took me into his home and I was his roommate. So uh, everything that I had a question about um, coming to UT, where to go, how to get to breakfast, uh, he helped me out. And, and I couldn't thank him enough for that, for just sheltering me um, into this program and welcoming me with open arms. Coach, after the season you had, how frustrating of a loss is this? Just didn't disappoint me in the outcome. I um, wasn't disappointed in the preparation. Um, there was a couple things that I think were just uncharacteristic of us tonight. And, and, uh, you know, so disappointed in those things, but uh, I love these guys, man. They, they fight, they scratch, they claw, they compete. You know what I mean? Great competitive environment in there tonight. Short, get checks come back in late January and start the process all over again. And we can continue to, to buy into um, that process and each other. I have a chance to do something special next year. Josh Purdue had over 500 passing yards and five touchdowns. Yeah. Was that their execution or were there some? Uh, For sure, they executed well. You know what I mean? They made some competitive catches uh, during the course of the, of the ball game. And <laughs> Level chasing that situation. Yeah, uh, right on the edge there, and, and um, <clears throat> Coach Eck believed in it. Uh, but the biggest thing is Chase did too, and, and uh, he had the look in his eye where he wanted the opportunity to, to go drain it, and shoot, he gave it a hell of a run. You know, disappointed we didn't get the ball just a little bit closer for him. You know, that's that's on me. Do you, do you see this as a motivation going into next year, or is that a complete restart next year? <clears throat> something that we can build off of. Um, right now, everyone's <coughs> remembering us from this loss. So um, to change that narrative is, uh, is big. Josh, when you say uh, getting back together in January, will, personally, will you feel all caught up? I mean, given that you were so far behind on this cycle, you know, in late <coughs> January, do you feel like you finally caught up? I don't know if you ever catch up when you're in this spot, but yes. Uh, It'll be completely different because you're able to put to a plan together for your second semester before the second semester starts, and and uh, so in that way, uh, it'll be uh, be good for myself, our staff, and, and our players. Steele, what do you think makes uh, the passing game of Purdue so effective? Mm, no, honestly, like they they ran good, good routes, they caught the ball, they made very, very tough tough catches, and you know they 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 just. Were were efficient. Like we had, we had, we had some busts, so so they kind of helped helped them out. But they were they were just efficient in everything that that, that they did tonight, as far as passing. Yeah, you, like you slid out the corner for at least a couple of drives. So do you got any practice time there? Or was that just something in the game? Hey, we need you to go out there. Oh no, I've 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 always pra practiced it because I want to know you know who's doing what. 
So when he threw me out there, I already knew knew what to do and knew where, where everybody was was going to be at. Honestly, one word that like stuck out to me was growth, because uh, coming off of last last year, you know, we we were all falling apart, and then as soon as uh, Coach Hype and his staff got here. Like it just started at the ground, and that was like you know way way higher than what we we had it. So just growth, and like the, the young guys, I've seen get a change in them. Like just doing what the older guys, as as my, myself and Hendon and uh, Seth are doing, you know, just doing doing extra stuff. So, so so growth is really like the the biggest thing. Josh, you coach enough football. I'm sure you're going to be on the, uh, the bad end of some weird calls. This this late in the game, this late in the season, how do you make sure the message is perspective, and not too much emotion? I mean, I think you, you sit back and you think about the things that, that uh, you have a chance to control, you know. And, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, when you're in a competitive environment, uh, you got to control your controllables, and that's it. And, and uh, there's some things that we handled really well tonight. Uh, there's some things that we didn't, you know. And uh, that's myself, our coaching staff, it's our players. It's all of us getting better. And, uh, uh, yeah. You walk in the locker room, you, and you can see it when they walked off the field. Uh, it hurts, right? And shoot, if it ever doesn't, then you got the wrong group of guys in, inside the building. Um, they're prideful. They care. I think that's showing up in the way they competed tonight, but it's shown in the growth of, of over the last 11 months. And, and so, you know, always come from a place of passion uh, and love and, and uh, be careful about the emotion of, of anything that's going on and, and uh, just, you know, think before you before you speak and, and uh, you know, I'm proud of these guys, man. I really am. Disappointed in tonight, you know, and uh, <clears throat> the journey is way more important than the destination in, in some respects, you know what I mean? Not that we don't want the right destination either, right? But, man, this journey's been awesome with these guys. Josh, do you support some kind of mandatory cooling off period for injured players before returning to the game, or is that something you, it's just a reality of the sport in this yeah. era? You know what's crazy is the officials wanted that tonight. I thought that was pretty comical that they came up and said that to me. Yeah, they, they, think, they think there needs to be a rule change. Cedric, would you just talk about the quantum leap you had this year and just what this season meant to you? I think the biggest thing is that the team, like to see us grow, like Theo mentioned earlier, was, you know, truth be told, we was really just falling apart. And Coach Apple really came in here, you know, set a standard. And he's done so much for me and my teammates. And I try to play my butt off for them and him. So, you know, I think I grew a lot this year. But, man, one thing I'm really taking from this year is how much the team grew. Cedric, when you caught that second touchdown, did you know that put you over 1,000? I know uh, Hendon had kind of cut up with you earlier this week saying that if you don't get the 1,000, it's his bad. But uh, did you kind of know it? I had a strong feeling. Cedric, how physical was it? It looked like it got more physical. They got more physical when you the game. Cool, they all after that first quarter. How physical was this game on the perimeter compared to other games? It was physical. A lot of press. Um, you know, they was out there talking a little bit. Uh, like I said, nothing I, me and my teammates can't handle. Uh, you know, we play physical too, but it was definitely um, a physical game, and um, you know, we just gotta execute better. And did that have any things about how you plan to try to get better with your receivers, with your offense, with your team in the offseason, started to run through your mind, or how quickly we get to that? Yeah. As soon as we get back, first day of workouts, I know me and Sid are already planning to stay after, and we're going to get some of those young guys <clears throat> out there to stay after and, and pitch, do some pitch and catch and uh, get on some extra film as well. Uh, we've got time for a couple more questions. And how would you kind of – I know you probably want to go back and, and watch and get a better view, but what, what, how would you kind of evaluate how you played and some of the things that you did um, this game? I'd say average. Um, really proud of my, my teammates. Um, you know, they had my back the whole game. And um, I just try to go out there and play hard for those guys and the coaching staff and the university as well. 
you know, after the last whistle and saw you kind of just taking things in there, uh, just kind of taking through your mind what was going through your mind uh, playing in your hometown the last time. Uh, I mean, just it was just just hurt was was going through my mind. You know, um, I let laid out on the line for my brothers, and, and then they did did the same, and it just just hurt, just not not coming out with, with a win. Gentlemen, thank you very much.